Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Khorasan, the Caliph and the Corrupter. This episode is titled The Season, Not the Time. So let's let's go ahead and discuss how we can know that we are in the apocalyptic era. Now, Isa alayhi salam, he speaks about the time of his return. And he says that we can know the season, but we cannot know the exact time. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen. The same way that, that we won't know the exact end, but we can know the approximate season. And he speaks in, term of, in terms of seasons quite a bit. One thing that he talks about is that when it's time to flee the cities, that you should, we should pray that it is not during winter and that we are not with child. So there's a winter uh, aspect to it. So we could take it literally. Will it literally mean um, it is the winter season in, in, the, uh, in maybe the northern hemisphere? Or is it talking about a winter of humanity, like a winter period? This is, this is where I'm leaning toward. However, it also could be a weather event. Like, so for instance, maybe a mini ice age could appear. Now, there have been researchers who have suggested we are moving into uh, a, a mini ice age. I'm not certain about this, but it's interesting to consider. Um, we have ha had many, many, many small ice ages over, over millennia. So, um, so we can know the season, but not the time. And oftentimes, Isa is speaking about a harvest of humanity which suggests a maturation of humanity, a time when we come into our maturity. And um, he speaks about like, and I'll discuss the harvest in another video where he's discussing kind of an oppositional um, harvest where you have the harvest of mature humanity, which also has a first fruits. And there are, there's what's called, uh, so the wheat and the tares. And he also speaks about the chaff. So a ta the tares, those look like wheat. So, uh, uh, you know, tares, they grow in the, in the Palestine region, in Sham, and they, it, it's a plant that looks similar to the wheat plant, but it has a toxicity to it, a poison to it. It, it does not have nutritional benefit. So it resembles wheat, um, but it is not wheat. And then chaff, that's what happens after you thresh the wheat in order to get the kernels, the seeds, um, the, the nutritional benefit to make bread out of. Um, it's the, you know, the, the waste that is left and both the, uh, so that would get tossed into the fire typically or just thrown to the winds. Whereas the, the tares, Isa, he says to not to rip out the, the, the tares too early, let them grow to their full height along with the wheat. And then we can pull them out because we can recognize them and see who they are and what they are, remove them uprooting them, uh, in, including root and stem, and then they get tossed into the fire. So this, this metaphor is very interesting. And then there's a first fruits. I would argue, and I'll discuss this in another video, that the first fruits are uh, related to the caliph to come, who is the for alayhi salam, who is the forerunner of Isa, and he's laying the groundwork for Isa. I consider him to be a direct disciple of Isa. He's, he's uh, the, the direct descendant and grandchild of, of, of our prophet, peace be upon him. Um, but he's also a disciple in a number of respects um, to Isa. So he's a disciple of both, of both of the past two Rasuls. Um, there's another, another Rasul he's a disciple to from my perspective as well. We'll discuss that in, in the near future, inshallah. So let's talk about this winter, a collective winter. I would argue that humanity is in a long, dark night of the soul. And on the other side of the dark night, it's, it's, it's always darkest before the dawn. So we're going to be coming into, into a Fajr period, you know, the Fajr of, of, the, uh, of the Imam's life where, where you know, he, he's, he's coming into the broad daylight. And um, we come out of our long dark night of the soul. He's got his own personal dark night that he comes out of first and then leads the, the collective out of it. And those are the first fruits. And his immediate followers would be the first fruits of the harvest. And then there will be a, a, like a collective maturation of humanity from there. And um, then Isa returns, alayhi salam, and eliminates the, the liar and Yuzhim Majuj, you know, through, um, through combat and through, um, and through dua, through prayer. Um, so Allah eliminates Yuzh and Majuj. Um, so anyway, this collective winter, what's interesting is, like I said, it could be a mini ice age. It could be literally in winter time. Um, but perhaps 
this is something else. So it's, it's kind of paradoxical that, that the harvest might come in a springtime rather than before winter. Typically, harvest comes before winter. Now, we know there are certain areas of the world where they have multiple harvests through the year, and in the typical seasons that we know in the northern hemisphere do not match up. They might have um, several crops per year. So we're talking about humanity, and we're spread worldwide. And so I'm arguing that there is, this is not just some Middle Eastern thing. This is going to take place all around the world, and that we're, it's a, this is a spiritual conflict and a spiritual maturation. So this collective winter would be followed by spring, a renewal or a resurrection of humanity when it appears that we have, we have been eliminated and, and genocided and, or almost genocided, and then we are renewed and as, as we stand upright. Um, so then we have this paradoxical harvest taking place in a spring, a time of greenery, verdancy. Um, so we've got the first fruits, and they are dedicated to truth most high, the compassionate creator and source of creation. So let's just consider that this, this, that the harvest, and that this, we can know the season, but we cannot know the exact time. And we need to be ready at all times for Isa's return. We need to do not just wait for the caliph to come. Do not just wait for the imam, for the rightly guided one. But we need to be taking steps to be prepared. If you, if you read comments on, on the, the videos about the end times, people are always like, you know, I'm waiting for the Mahdi to come, and uh, I would love to, to, be, to join his army and be part of, part of his, his uh, movement. I would say that you can actually do a lot about this. You need, the, the way that you take Baya, don't just think literally. You need to go to the right-hand path, and we need to, we need to make Toba and Tazkia. This is the prophetic way. I guarantee this is his way. Toba and Tazkia. Go through and, and reorient ourselves toward ethics and purity. Purify ourselves bodily and mind holistically. And as we go through this, we come into a wise and compassionate way of living a just and merciful way of living. So align yourself with these ways, and then you will be ready when it's time to be ready. And then he will be laying the groundwork for Isa's return, inshallah. So anyway, these are, these are all some thoughts based on, on many years of study and research and, and, and prayer and retreat, prayerful retreat. So let's just consider these things. Allahu alam, I'm not claiming that these are absolutely true, but I think these are worth considering, these ideas, and they're worth sitting with and praying with, all right? So until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.